Here's some midseason superlatives. So the first superlative we're gonna go with, we're gonna go with maybe a pretty obvious one. Maybe I have the answers, but I want to see how the chat reacts to these. So we have best freshman. I know there's the obvious answer. That's who I've picked. You have players like Jaden Ball, DJ Lagway, Tank Hawkins has played a decent bit. LJ McCray has played a good bit. Aiden Ch- Aaron Childs and Miles Graham. Greg Smith played a little bit at the end of the Kentucky game. So who does everybody think the uh, best freshman has been for this Florida team? I think there's really only two answers here. And even between those two, there's one player that just sticks out. And with that being said, the superlative for best freshman at the midseason mark goes to DJ Lagway. I mean, he's just been insane, averaging, had the game where he just averaged over 37 yards per completion. Saw it against Samford, where he almost set the all-time Florida record for passing yards in a game. Saw him almost make the comeback and blow win against uh, Tennessee. Ball, had he had a better start or more carries at the start of this season? Could have had a good argument, but we had a little bit of playing with Trey on Webb, Jacoby Jackson getting snaps for him. So I think maybe by the end of this, no, I think by the end of the season, Lagway is going to have it wrapped up. It was really uh, the best chance that ball had. <laughs> I think t- Rob just trying to throw some love out there to Tank Hawkins. I think he deserves more playing time, him and Ada Mizell. But it easily goes to DJ Lagway. Now, a fun one. Who is the most improved player on the team? So not including freshmen or transfers. Like, Pup Howard was a freshman at South Carolina last year, and now he's a great linebacker at Florida. At that point, it'd probably be him. But he's not on here. My three options I narrow it down to. Not in order. Caleb Banks, Damian George, Jack Pyburn. How'd you have asked me this after the Texas AM game? I would have answered probably Caleb Banks. I was at the Mississippi State game. We gave up a near touchdown drive based on some big runs from Mississippi State. Where they got two chunk plays because one player didn't set the edge. We ended up getting a stop on downs, turnover on downs, because of a TFL from this one, the same player. Ever since he's gotten those TFLs, against Mississippi State. I went from calling him maybe one of the worst players I've seen on a Florida jersey, in a Florida jersey, to one of the best players on the defense. And that's really why it's easy for me to pick Jack Pyburn. Maybe it's uh, more hustle we've seen from him. Guess maybe they saw some, he noticed something against Mississippi State and it just clicked for him. Got robbed. S here saying Jack Pyburn as well. He deserves it. I owe him apologies because how I reacted to his play early in the season. <laughs> and yeah, he really earned his most improved player award. Next, we're going to go to the best transfer on the offensive side of the ball. We talked about our receivers earlier, so you know some of them are on here. And maybe one of them is the winner. The options for best offensive transfer that I had, Elijah Badger, 
Chamure DK, Brandon Crashaw Dixon Davis. Can't remember. Brandon Crashaw. I think you saw Crenshaw not start. He's played okay. So it really comes down to two here. DK and Badger, both the receiver transfers. You have them saying they're tied. I can see that. I went with Elijah Badger. I think we've seen more explosive plays from him. DK has been the more solid, steady hand. More consistent, maybe. But the deep play from Badger, especially with DJ Lagway, I think he might surpass DK by the end of the season. And he's a bit above him in yards right now. I would like to see Badger try to, I, I don't know, finish those touchdowns on the big passes. I mean, they're pretty excusable. But maybe you'd like to see him get more touchdowns there. DK also has a punt return, which kind of makes it closer returns which does make it a bit closer but I did end up going with Elijah Badger now on the opposite side of the ball best defensive transfer yet yeah, after is a great game against Kentucky Jaquaz, Br Jaquaz Bridges you have from South Carolina Grayson Pup Howard and the surprise of them all, from Northern Illinois, George Gums. This is probably the toughest one for me so far. Because I really like what Gums has done for us. Especially considering I did not see this happening at all. When I saw he was starting, I remember a bunch of us were in a chat when he started when it was announced. And we all were insanely surprised Rob throwing some slackman hasn't played in Douglas I no I don't want to hate on a player so being sarcastic okay I thought I thought so but I wanted to give it to gums but I think and bridges if he had played like this the entire season he'd be a lot closer if not winning the award but he just hasn't so it's got to go to easily to Pup Howard I mean Grayson Pup Howard is arguably better than Shamar James I mean yeah Shamar and I was as high as anybody on Shamar James Pup has been very consistent not missing his angles great tackler in open space has brought a good bit of blitzing and for a true sophomore, I think, has been as much as you can want from a linebacker. Hoping he stays next year if we fire the coach and stuff. Because he could be an all-SEC level linebacker. Shamar and Castell regressed. I wouldn't say Shamar has regressed. I'll say he hasn't really improved as much. He's also the entire he's also the leader of the defense. Can't put more weight on his shoulders. Having to make the calls and everything could make him start out of place. I, I talked about it earlier with the preview, a uh, review of the Kentucky game. He made a bad play there, which gave up a first down. But I still think he's played a really solid this year. <laughs> Now, the two most important awards. Best overall offensive player. This is a really tough one. I have four names. I have Elijah Badger. One best transfer already. I have Graham Mertz. Outside of that Miami game, I think Graham Mertz has played as good as he did last season. Also had some good runs, but he also missed that Kentucky game. I have Montrell Johnson. As much as people want to say play ball, Montrell had a crazy game against my uh, Tennessee. If Montrell doesn't get hurt, we beat Tennessee, in my opinion. We have DJ Lagway. 
one best uh, freshman, uh, one of the best freshman award has been maybe the most explosive player on this entire team. And on the offensive line, we'll put Jake Slaughter. In pass protection, he's been elite all season. Run blocking a little iffy, but had a great run blocking game against Kentucky. I think it's hard to vote for the offensive lineman, but you got to give him some love. Austin Barber has been really solid all around too, but I put Slaughter on there. I still haven't even picked my winner for this award yet. I think I'm going to go Elijah Badger. I think had Lagway been starting the entire year, then, like with Ball earlier, maybe he had, maybe he'd be higher up. Can't forget, now he didn't get time to get a groove on against uh, AM. He also didn't really play amazing against them. While Badger's been more reliant on the QBs getting him the ball, so it's like his bad games are more excusable. So I'm going to go with Elijah Badger as the best offensive player. Again, Montreal Johnson, had he had played against um, Kentucky, had he had gotten three or a couple of touchdowns against Kentucky, I could have easily have given it to him. <clears throat> now, maybe even a harder one. Best defensive player. Guys, I'm having a tough time here making this choice for this one. I try to pick someone from each position group here. So on the defensive line, I have Cam Jackson. I think we haven't seen much. I don't think you've seen him make those insane plays, but I think that's kind of what you want from your nose tackle. Like, you don't really hear too much about crazy nose tackle making plays. And he's, he's just been solid run defense. Run defense has been good. Not as much pass rush, but his run defense has been just really good, man. Pup Howard, one best defensive transfer, has been an amazing linebacker. I also put Shamar James on there because I'm a big fan of Shamar. But I feel like he's kind of on there. And then you have Rob here who has his easy pick, Jason Marshall. He's the last one on my list for who I'm considering. Jason Marshall Jr. has had an elite season. Had he have had this season last year, he wouldn't even be on this team. He'd be in a first round draft pick. He'd be playing on he'd be playing right now, probably. In the NFL. He did just get hurt, unfortunately, but this is the mid-season mark. We're not counting what's gonna happen in the future. Give me Jason Marshall. Not gonna let Pup get the clean sweep like Badger did in his, on his awards. So I'm going to go Jason Marshall to get that best defensive player locking up teams, wide receiver ones, when we're not in coverage zone. Yeah, we're not in zone coverage. Uh, 